Welcome to the audio excerpts of Bhagavad Gita for All with Nalan Narula on gettingpositivekarmanow.com recorded in front of a live audience. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya We had completed a discussion last time on chapter 7 before that we had question and answers Now we move today to chapter 8 of the Bhagavad Gita and chapter 8 is variously known as attainment of salvation or attaining the supreme how do you get there so that is what chapter 8 is all about and if you would recall in chapter 7 the last conclusion that Krishna had given to Arjun was that basically he is the underlying force and the governing principle of the material manifestation of the demigods and of all sacrifices, all yajyas and that a person who with a steadfast mind firmly linked in yoga with Krishna if he can understand this with the proper yogic connection as he has delineated in chapter 6 and 7 uh, such a person can understand and even know me at the time of death which is very important because what you think of at the time of death what you practice for your whole life is what is is what you are likely to be conscious of or aware of when you leave your body and that is actually a final test so as your consciousness is at the time of death you will get your next position in birth accordingly so that is very important that text was sa adi bhuta adi daivam maam sa adi yagyam cha ye vidhu prayan kale api cha maam te vidhu yukta chetasa so sa adi bhuta the governing principle behind the material manifestation adi daivam that governing principle underlying the demigods maam means me krishna sa adhi yagyam cha ye vidhu prayan kale so those who know me to be the sa adhi yagyam also the one who sustains all sacrifices and for whom all sacrifices are meant eventually uh, cha ye vidhu prayan kale those who know this vidhu is from knowledge knowing prayan kale at the time of death giving up your body api cha maam te vidhu yukta chetasa then they can come to me uh, come to me is implied because it means that they can even understand and know me at the time of leaving their body with the yukta chetasa with a linked consciousness steadily linked unbreakable consciousness which is previously he said that a yogi is a person who does this with a dridvrita a vow a very strong powerful vow so now we have chapter 8 of the Bhagavad Gita text 1 where Arjun is asking Lord Krishna Arjun Vacha Kim Tat Brahma Kim Adhyatmam Kim Karma Purushottama Adhibhutam Cha Kim Proktam Adhidaivam Kim Uchyate So Arjun is asking Krishna what is the meaning of Brahma? What is Brahma? Because Krishna has mentioned that a person who is connected to me is Brahma, knower of Brahma. He is saying what is this Brahma? What is the self? Adhyatmam What is the me, the self? Because we refer to ourselves as many different aspects is it the bodily self, is it the mental self, is it a so-called spiritual self, uh, is it the Paramatma, what, what are these things, what are uh, the fruitive activities, what are all these material manifestation and which is coming out of actually 
karma and kim proktam adhidevam kim uchyate so what are the demigods who are they what are they please explain this now we can't assume that arjun is totally in ignorance about these things but it appears that he has been made ignorant or apparently somewhat ignorant in parts uh, in order that krishna can have this conversation with him so the lord has explained yagyas karma uh, what is the demigods what are the fruitive activities what is the material manifestation and uh, what is the uh, spiritual self the adhyatvam so now he is asking for clarification arjun is asking for more clarification on this point and krishna is now going to explain in chapter 8 what exactly this means so chapter 8 is now the foundation of what we will study in chapter 9 which is the most confidential knowledge about the divine so that is at the central part of the bhagavad gita there are 18 chapters ninth chapter is right bang in the middle and that's where the most confidential knowledge is and that is the development of bhakti yoga so all this has been a background up to now to lay the foundation for what is actually bhakti yoga so you started off with the analytical study you started off with hatha yoga we started off with sankhya yoga and now we are coming to the point of bhakti yoga okay text 2 chapter 8 adi yagya katham ka atra dehe asmin madhusudana प्रयाण काले च कथम ज्ञेया असी नियत आत्म भी अधि यज्ञ द सस्टेनर ऑफ ऑल सैक्रिफाइसेस द लॉर्ड ऑफ सैक्रिफाइस कथम का अत्र देहे सो हाउ आर वी टू नो दैट द लॉर्ड ऑफ द सैक्रिफाइस लिव्स इन दिस देहे इन दिस बॉडी अस्मिन इन वेयर डज ही लिव ओ मधुसूदन prayan kale and how can those at the time of death katham gyaya know you uh, niyata atma bhi the self controlled how do they know this how do how will they uh, know you how will they come to know you if they are engaged in this self controlled devotional service in other words uh, to you and he is referring to him as madhusudana now in the first chapter of bhagavad gita when sanjay is narrating what is happening on the battlefield of kurukshetra he is reporting to dhritarashtra he also refers to krishna as madhusudana and then right in the first few shlokas of bhagavad gita before anything is revealed to arjun about krishna's true identity he is also referring to krishna as madhusudana now this is very important very interesting madhusudana means the destroyer of the demon madhu so there is a narrative where madhusudana destroyed a demon called hayagriv and actually krishna nowhere has directly destroyed hayagriv but it is an incarnation of vishnu so one of his expansions but Arjun is saying that I know that you were Hayagriv, and the significance of the narrative of Hayagriv is that he actually rescued the Vedas from the demons called Madhu and Kaitab. So there is a very interesting narrative as to how Madhu and Kaitab came about and how they stole the Vedas. Uh, when Vishnu was reclining on his uh, asan in the garbhodakshay ocean on the sheshnag and some ear wax shirodhara came out from his ear and from that two demons madhu and kaitab were born or appeared and they did lot of penance and they got lot of blessing eventually from lakshmi devi that uh, they could only die when they wanted to die or they asked for death and in the process they became very powerful gundas you can you can imagine big demoniac rascals and they freely 
took anything they wanted from the universe. They were like robber barons. And eventually what they did was they went and confronted Lord Brahma and stole the Vedas from him. And Brahma couldn't do anything. So Brahma was totally frustrated and upset because they were more powerful than him and he was unable to protect the Vedas. So he went immediately to Lord Vishnu. Now Lord Vishnu was resting. And how was he resting? There are various narratives. One of the narratives is that he had just fought a demon called Hayagriv and after a very, 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 very long battle, he had overcome him and he was resting. So he was sitting in uh, Padmasan and he had his bow and he was holding on to his bow as a support and he had gone into a meditative trance to recover his energies or uh, just meditate. Uh, and at that time, Lord Brahma could not wake him up. So the demigods also gathered, he gathered and they didn't know what to do. So what is to be done? So one narrative is that Lord Brahma then generated some termites who ate through the bow, snapping the bow. And when the bow snapped, it made a huge sound throughout the universe and Vishnu's head fell off. Now, that was a big problem for the demigods. So what to do? So then eventually they got the head of a horse of Lord Surya, one of his chariot horses. And they placed that on the head of Vishnu. Now that chariot horse is like the color of the morning sun, which is pinkish red. And so that became the form of Hayagriv. Hayagriv means one who has a neck like a horse. So above the neck he was like a horse. And he then uh, went to these demons, Madhu and Kaitab, and he actually fooled them. He said, you know, you got such a nice boon from my feminine aspect of my energy, Yogmaya, Nidra, Yog Nidra, I was in, and Yogmaya Devi, Lakshmi Devi gave you this boon. Uh, why don't you give me a boon also? You are very powerful people. So he ap appealed to their false ego. Now, Madhu refers also to honey and also to something that is pungent and bitter. So the false ego is like honey to begin with and then it is becoming very bitter. There is a lot of bitterness involved. So that is a very significant aspect also of his name. So Ma <laughs> he... So the demons got very thrilled, oh, you know, uh, Vishnu is coming to us, my God, you know, okay, we'll give him, what do you want? I'll give you. So, Mr. High agreed, so he said, okay, I want your death, so you please die now. And so they died. And that was the end of the demons. <laughs> so, so Madhusudana means one who is rescuing knowledge, and in fact, in August, uh, at there is a Madhusudan, uh, there is a Madhusudan Hayagriv Jayanti, and uh, Hayagriv is of course the horse incarnation with the neck like a horse and the head like a horse, who rescued the Vedas. So you, traditionally, um, by learned Brahmins, he is worshipped or he is propitiated or he is uh, meditated upon uh, on the full moon in August, which was in the middle of August this year. And um, they invoke his blessings and energies for wisdom. So, knowledge and wisdom. So, Krishna has been saying all this while that it is very important that you have the knowledge, the acquired knowledge and the realized knowledge, which is why this spiritual education is so important. Because without it, we are lost without a road map as to where we are and where do we need to go. We are just wandering around in the whole universe. So here, again, uh, just to remind you, Arjuna is asking Krishna, how does this Lord of Sacrifice live in the body, in which part, and how can those who are in engaged in your uh, service know you? Because Krishna has mentioned yoga, and so he's, which is those who serve him, will be considered linked to him if they do it in the proper way. So, 
these are some of the questions and then lord krishna is answering arjun shri bhagwan watch in chapter 8 text 3 aksharam brahma parmam स्वभाव अध्यात्म उच्चते भूत भाव उद्भव करा विसर्ग कर्म संज्ञता द सुप्रीम लॉर्ड सेड दैट द ब्रह्मा और द स्पिरिचुअल नेचर इज अक्षरम इज इनडिस्ट्रक्टिबल कैन नॉट बी डिस्ट्रॉयड एंड द इनडिस्ट्रक्टिबल living entity who is beyond the material modes of nature who is transcendental he is called brahma and the self is his eternal nature so here the understanding is that there is a non eternal nature and then there is the eternal nature so the non eternal nature is made of the eight elements which he had referred to earlier the five physical elements and the mind intelligence and false ego one buddhi ahankar पंचभूत एंड मन बुद्धि एंड अहंकार देन भूत भाव उद्भव करा द एक्शन दैट लीड्स टू द डेवलपमेंट ऑफ द नॉन परमानेंट मटेरियल बॉडी इज कॉल्ड कर्म भूत भाव उद्भव करा द एक्टिविटी दैट प्रोड्यूस द मटेरियल बॉडीज इन अदर वर्ड्स इज कर्म which he had explained earlier that people are struggling with these eight elements and creating some activities which are getting consequences and there is a demand for this so there uh, so therefore uh, the material bodies are developing and these are called karma sangita these are known as fruitive activities so fruitive is something that has a result or a consequence in the material world these are fruitive activities i am doing something in expectation of a result or i am working for a particular result and if i am working in the material zone of energies then i am developing karma which binds me to this material universe and it will promote the material manifestation it promotes the universe there is a demand for it because of this kind of activity but he is also saying earlier he had explained and we know as uh, we have discussed many times with you that there is also transcendental activity which krishna is referring to in this text number 3 that the activity which is beyond the material modes of uh, nature the parma brahma parma so that nature which is aksharam brahma parma beyond the material modes of nature of goodness passion and ignorance so we can say it is shuddh purified goodness or pure transcendental spiritual energy swabhav that is your nature swabhav means what is your nature so this is your true nature the everything else is temporary and produced out of karma fruitive activities and that gives you this body so different bodies come according to our activities and then we do some karm kand sacrifices or yagyas to attain some material benefits which is again karma keeping you in the cycle of the material universe we, we go up to various higher planets and then when our credit card runs out or debit card runs out then we come back to this place or go lower depending on what's going on in your activities so it is explained in the bhagavatam that the living entity when he descends through rain enters the ground is taken up by food grains and then when the person eats the food grain he goes inside uh, and becomes part of the seminal fluid which during then the uh, sexual intercourse is transferred to the womb of the woman and that's where the living entity grows and it is always accompanied by the param atma the super soul there's the soul and the super soul or the super self so now we have one point we can clarify here there is the brahma which is the living entity bhakti vedanta swami mentions this 
and is to be distinguished from Parabrahma, the Supreme Lord. So Parabrahma and Brahma. So that is the transcendental Lord beyond everything. And then there is the living entity, Brahma, who is whose true self is also transcendental. So text number four. Adibhutam kshara bhava purusha cha adhidevatam adhiyagya aham eva atra dehe deha bhritam vara. Adibhutam, the physical manifestation, the material modes of nature, the eight elements, kshara are constantly changing, bhava, nature. Purusha, the universal form and adhidaivatam, including the demigods like this, the sun, moon, the planets, everything. Adhiyagya, the sustainer of all sacrifices, the super soul, aham, Krishna, eva, atra, I am certainly Dehe Deha Britam. I appear there uh, in this uh, Deha Britam Vara. I am there above Supreme Vara in this body and I am in and we know that where does the, where is the natural place for the super soul is the heart of the living entity. Because Arjun has asked where does this supreme nature reside? So now in which part of the body so Krishna is explaining to him that there are two natures one is the Brahma and one is the Parabrahma and they are sitting in the heart that is their natural position so what does he do as the super soul he is guiding the living entity uh, as to what his bank balance of karma is and he inspires him to certain action according to his karmic bank balance his karma quotient so when you Heal your karma quotient with this uh, liberating energy of the KQ force or of Reiki, then you are rewriting your books of account. And the super soul, which is seated right above the soul in your body, knows everything about you past, present, future, everything. And as the soul decides to act, in whichever direction he decides to act, the super soul then guides him in that way. So Krishna has earlier said, people who are interested in approaching the demigods, I make their faith firm. People who approach me, I make their faith firm. So it depends where you want to go. So if you are running to the demigods, then you are going there. Then you are not coming to me. But you leave the demigods alone and you come to me, that's a different story. That is the path towards liberation. The other path approaching the demigods is the path of constant recycling in the material universe. So he is saying that there is a need for that also because people have not developed sufficiently. Bahunam janmanam ante gyan van maam prapadyante Vasudevam sarvamiti sa mahatma sa durlava After many births, out of many perfect people, few know who I am. They are great souls. So, he is provided for everybody. So the Vedic society is built up like this. That you have, according to one's capability, you have provisions available to you to develop on the spiritual path or to develop sufficient pious activity that at some point, after many, many births, many lifetimes, you may come to this point of understanding and then it's your choice. Do you want to run on the fear path with the demigods, the planets, Karamkan section? Not that it is not recommended. Yes, it is there. But the higher level, you, you elevate to the higher level beyond the Karamkan section of the Vedas. And that provision is also there for the spiritual activity directly becoming hmm, uh, sevakar, doing service, seva. Hmm? Krishna is saying this uh, earlier. So those who are not able to understand the personal form of Krishna, for them it is recommended you can worship the universe as the form of Krishna. He is appearing in the material manifestation, he is the underlying energy 
is the underlying source. So you can approach that, that is easier for you. In text 5, chapter 8, Krishna says, Antakale cha maam eva smaran muktva kalivaram ya prayati sa madbhavam yati na asti atra sanshaya. Antakale, at the end of your life of this body, the transcendental self never dies. He has established that. It is eternal, it is indestructible. Antakale, at the end of this life in this body, Chamam eva smaran, those who leave their body remembering me alone. Chamam eva, only me remembering, smaran, remembering. Muktva, quitting this body, leaving this body, free of this body. Muktva means free of this body. Uh, it is also in, uh, indicative that once you do that, you are liberated. Mukt means to be liberated from also muktva. So when you are liberating yourself from the material body in that consciousness, in that Krishna consciousness, then ya prayati sa madbhavam yati nasti atra sanshaya. Such a person immediately attains madbhavam, my nature, which is what? Pure transcendental beyond the material manifestation. So, the pure Brahma nature, not Parabrahma, because that is the Supreme Divine, but the transcendental nature in a limited form, which is you, the living entity. Madhbhavan yati na asti atra sanche. There is absolutely no doubt about this. It's very, very clear. Once you do this, so this is the point, that the point of death, you must practice Remembering Krishna alone. If you are remembering this family member, that family member, then you are stuck in that sequence of having to come back because now you are attracted to that form or you are connected to that form of husband, wife, friend, son, daughter, mother, father, whatever they might be. So, or the demigods, if you are going to think of the demigods, you will go to the demigod planets provided you have enough uh, good karma credits to take you there. Enough pious activity has been done. And once that runs out, then you're back in. So it's like going for some kind of vacation. And then ultimately, uh, this is universal tourism. So you travel here all across the universe. And in Bhagavatam, in fact, it is said uh, that uh, the living entity is mounted on this body, like this machine-like body. Uh, yantra Rudha. It is like a Yantra and he is traveling across the whole universe and eventually just rotating around in different bodies, the temporary bodies. So this is very, very clear and easy to understand. So we take the continuity of this explanation process further in text number six. Yam yam va api smaran bhavam tyajati ante kalevaram tam tam eva eti kaunteya sada tat bhava bhavita. So, whatever state of mind you leave the body, you will attain that state. Hmm? So, that is very clear. Then, he says in text 7. Tasmat sarveshu kaleshu maam anusmara yuddha cha mai arpit man buddhi maam eva eshyasi asanshaya. Therefore, tasmat, therefore, sarveshu at all times, kaleshu, sarveshu kaleshu, always at all times, that's underlined. Mam Anusmara, go on remembering me. Yuddha, fight, even while you are fighting. Uh, surrender to me your activities. Mind, buddhi, man, buddhi, mam, surrender uh, to me. You give Asiasi, a sanshaya without any doubt. So dedicate your activities to me. Surrender to me. 
offer them these to me by thinking of me all the time that you are doing this for me and with your activities dedicated to me and your mind and intelligence fixed at all times sarveshu kaleshu at all times absolutely always uh, you will attain me without a doubt so again he is advising arjun you cannot give up fighting because that is your duty all you need to do is to change this because arjun was very fearful you know what will happen what will the the vedas are saying that don't do this that's all the karm kand section what will society say how can i destroy my relatives and i will get very bad name and so on and so forth so krishna is saying all you have to do is to dedicate these activities to me and just do them you do them as you are doing for me and that's it so there's nothing further required from you that's all your work the rest is mine hmm? and then he underlines this again in the next text uh, giving arjun more confidence and more promise to him that abhyas yog yuktein chetasa na anya gamina paramam purusham divyam yati partha anuchintayan abhyas yog yuktein practice abhyas practice 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 yoga yuktena being linked and engaged in this consciousness with me chetasa with mind and intelligence so man and buddhi so the ahankar part he is not talking about don't link your ahankar to me link your mind and intelligence rise above the false ego at the hara the place below your navel rise above that to the mind and the intelligence which is the third eye the temple chakras the third eye the crown chakra so na uh, anya gamina without being deviated from this path paramam purusham the supreme personality of god had divyam transcendental ya, uh, yati achieves partha son of pritha uh, his cousin in other words anuchintayan constantly thinking of me so such a person who meditates with mind and intent intelligence without being deviated from this path paramam purusham divyam yati partha anuchintayan achieves the supreme personality of godhead comes to him and that's me and you will come to me so what what is me is there present on the battlefield what does it mean come to me come to my personal abode of residence krishna lok golok vrindavan that is where you can b so this is very very powerful very very powerful i think we will pause here at text 8 of chapter 8 this is the foundation of the further knowledge that krishna is going to give him so that will come up next week we will discuss that so we will pause here and take any questions if there are any questions from anyone you've been listening to audio excerpts of bhagavad gita for all a lecture series by nalan kanarula on gettingpositivekarmanow.com